Ladies and gentlemen, it's a true honor to stand before you today as we gather in unity and spirit to celebrate and welcome an exceptional leader in our faith community. We are privileged to be in the presence of a man whose life is a testament to dedication, service, and unwavering faith. Please join me in extending a warm and heartfelt welcome to Apostle John Wesley, a guiding light who inspires us all to deepen our connection with God and each other. Apostle John Wesley serves as the Bishop of Eternal Life Church International, where he passionately shepherds his congregation and fosters a vibrant community of faith. He is also a dedicated worship minister and the inspiring host of Elevate TV, where he shares uplifting messages that resonate with viewers far and wide. In his personal life, Apostle Wesley is blessed with a loving wife, Hannah Wesley. And together, they are the proud parents of three wonderful children, Wesley Mundwa, Deborah Makena, and Zoe Zawadi. His commitment to family is a testament to his belief in the importance of nurturing relationship in every aspect of life. With over 21 years of experience in pastoral ministry, Apostle Wesley has devoted his life to serving others. His diverse skill sets include being a disc temperament profile trainer, a leadership coach and a worship team coach, all aimed at empowering individuals and fostering growth within the church community. Apostle Wesley holds a diploma in biblical study and a bachelor's degree in theology, equipping him with a solid foundation to guide others on their spiritual journeys. His mission is profound yet simple, to draw men to Christ through discipleship, encouraging each of us to deepen our faith and lives. And live out our calling. As he comes forward to share his insight and wisdom, let us open our hearts and minds, ready to receive the powerful message he brings. And as we do so, let's give a resounding Jesus ovation to welcome Apostle Joan Wesley. another counselor that he may abide with you forever that word another means there was one before amen, amen. or the that is like him and so jesus is referring to the holy spirit as another comforter putting himself in the same place as a comforter so jesus is a comforter the Holy Spirit is a prophet. In fact, when you study the scripture, the counselor, the Greek word is parakletos. And that word parakletos is also used as a reference to Christ. So as the Holy Spirit counsel, so does Jesus counsel. Hallelujah. So he is placed on the same place as God. Everyone say the Holy Spirit is God. I want you to say it until it sinks into your spirit. Now, there, there, is, there is something that we normally finish with. When we finish a meeting, we say, and now? Okay. Seems like I'm not like that one easy. And now with the grace of Jesus Christ. And? And? Be with us. That scripture is found in 2 Corinthians. Some of you didn't know. Now you know. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. It's a benedictive, benedictive scripture, but it simply talks about the Godhead. If you want to understand love, understand God. If you want to understand grace, understand Jesus. If you want to understand fellowship, understand the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that strengthens what we call fellowship. Is the one that strengthens what we call, the Greek word for fellowship is koinonia. Intimate relationship and encounters with one another. It is the Holy Spirit that strengthens fellowship. While it is Jesus that reveals grace and gives grace, and strengthens you in grace. The Holy Spirit strengthens fellowship. Every time there's a problem in fellowship, in 
invite the Holy Ghost. Okay. Every time you have problems in fellowship, you have issues with one another that cannot be resolved by sitting down to have conversations. Invite the Holy Spirit. Kaila. He will sort you out. He will sort you out. Everyone say, He is God. He is God. Say one more time, He is God. He is God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 15 to 17. Hebrews 10. 15 to 17. Let's read together, everybody. Let's go. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he has said before. Continue. This is the covenant that I will make with them, that those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Mm -hmm. And their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Now, who said those words? Who said that? Okay, go back. Go back. Go back. Verse 16. You see, I cannot preach about the Holy Spirit. I can only teach. You need to understand. Amen. So, who said these words? Okay, it's the Holy Spirit, but who said the past? Because this is a quotation of an Old Testament text. <laughs> he said, this is a covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. Haven't you read that scripture in the book of Ezekiel? Okay. But then the Bible begins in verse 15. It says, the Holy Spirit say. So, when God speaks, the Holy Spirit has spoken. When God speaks, the Holy Spirit has spoken. He says, wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before. The, the Holy Spirit did not enter into time on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> the Holy Spirit has always been since Adam. Uh, I'm beginning to understand things now. It is after Pentecost that the Holy Spirit began to permanently indwell the believer. But before Pentecost, he would come upon men, and sometimes he would also come in men. I will show you from scripture. Have you read the scripture where the Bible says, and this was Joseph, a man in whom the Spirit of God dwelleth. So the Holy Spirit did not begin to dwell in the hearts of men after Pentecost. Beginning, beginning to build your understanding. Because there are people who have taught that the Holy Spirit before Pentecost was an upon experience. After Pentecost, in within experience. And when we teach those things, I've taught them before, we're thinking, hey, powerful revelation. Ah. When Jesus was standing before the 12th disciples, he said, and the Bible says, he breathed on them and they received the Spirit. That was before Pentecost. Before Pentecost. Jesus received the Holy Spirit. Ah, some of you are looking at me and wondering, what is this man doing? I'm saying, receive the Holy Spirit. Do you know that had a very interesting phrase. That the reason why the tongues of fire dwelt on the head because the problem of man <laughs> is in the head. You need an encounter with the Holy Ghost in the head. Look at your neighbor one more time. Please receive the Holy Ghost. God will sort your head. 
Yeah. So we see in this text that the Holy Spirit has been speaking. When Ezekiel spoke, it was the Spirit who was speaking. When Jeremiah spoke, it was the Holy Ghost who was speaking. I'm arguing my case to prove that the Holy Spirit is God. Yeah. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. His presence is amazing. Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the prize of the land? <laughs> Whilst it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto whom? Tell your neighbor, giving is coming next Sunday. Or is it not next Sunday? Ah, come on, look at your neighbor, say, next Sunday. Don't be an Ananias. Don't be Sapphira. What you have determined to give to God, you better give it all. Don't buy anybody a gift with God's money. Don't lie to God. Yeah. So when Peter is speaking to Ananias, saying you have lied to the Holy Spirit, and then in the same breath say, you have not lied to man, but unto God. Tell your neighbor, the Holy Spirit is God. Let's look at some of his characteristics in a few minutes. You can call them attributes if you like. And these characteristics that I'm going to share with you are characteristics that only belong to God. No man has them. No angel carries them. Only God. And yet they are attributed to the Holy Spirit. Number one, eternality. Eternality. Or eternal. I-T-Y Okay Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 Hebrews 9 14 Thank you Holy Spirit Hebrews 9 14 the Bible says How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So the Holy Spirit is called the eternal spirit. No other being can claim eternity. Only God. God is the only one who has no beginning and has no end. God has a few. When the Bible calls him the Alpha and Omega, it does not in any way limit his existence to Alpha and Omega. <laughs> It simply means he exists outside time. He begins, he offers, and he omegas, he ends. So God is the only one who has no beginning, who introduces beginnings. The Holy Ghost is the only one who has no beginning, but he introduces beginnings. He has no end, but he introduces ends. When God tells you, I will end you, believe you. He said, be afraid of him who has power to take not just your life, but to snuff out your soul. He said, don't fear man, because what man can do is just to your physical body. And then he can do nothing. <laughs> That's why when we encounter God, we are not afraid to die. <laughs> is afraid of systems that are locked up in time has not yet encountered the eternal one because when you encounter the eternal one you fear no man right that's why the prophets who had encountered the holy ghost will call out and cry for justice and righteousness and speak to kings that are in power and not be afraid because they had encountered the eternal one. 
they knew that my life is in the hands of God. Oh Jesus, one time when David had messed up, that, that, that God came to him and he said, I, I, I'm giving you two choices. Uh, I, I either hand you over to your enemies or you fall into my hands. And David says, I'd rather fall into your hands. <laughs> because in your hands I am safe. And in your hands I can find the mercy. In your hands you can destroy me and form me yet again. That you formed me before I was formed in my mother's womb. And you knew me and ordained me to be a prophet. What you did, you can undo, then redo it. But no man can do those things that God does. He is eternal. Number two, he is omnipotent. Omnipotent, that means all powerful. All powerful. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. I'm introducing the Holy Ghost to us. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Every time you read English and you see the word mortal, you're, mean, you're reading something that is corruptible, something that is perishable. So it says, He shall quicken your mortal bodies. A time is coming for us that believe and are being endured and adored by the Holy Ghost and with power from on high, when this flesh will put off immortality and put on immortality by the Spirit. The same way He raised Jesus. Ah, he raised Jesus from the dead. Let me tell you, I had something powerful. He said that even if Jesus had not been resurrected, he would still be intact. No maggot, no maggot would touch his body because the spirit would still be weakening his body. He is the spirit of resurrection. <laughs> he is the spirit of power. Death has no hold over him. And that's why Paul cries out in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, death or death, where is your sting? Because death has been swallowed up in victory by the spirit of resurrection. He's omnipotent. He's able to carry himself. And when he touches you, he quickens you. And that's why we have hope. Because this same spirit will quicken us and make us immortal. Same chapter, Romans chapter 8, verse 2. Let me show you something. There's something working in us. And I pray that you will see this. By the end of this conference, we will invite him. The Bible says that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. There is a law that works in those of us that believe. It's called the law of the spirit of life. Hey, look at your neighbor say the law of the spirit of life. You're about to encounter a quick day that will change your life forever. Hey. It's called the Holy Ghost. It's omnipotent. It's powerful. He can remove death. He can remove death. He is the spirit of resurrection. Ah. That's why the sisters of Lazarus, when they encounter Jesus in John chapter 11, and Jesus comes after Lazarus has been dead for four days. And do you remember who runs to meet with Jesus? Do you remember? You don't remember. Do you remember who ran to meet with Jesus? Who was it? Who remembers? That's your homework by the time we meet tomorrow. It's not. And she said, that you be here, my brother, but I've died. Remember the words? She said it. And Jesus said, but I'm here. And then she said, I know you're here. He said, but I am the resurrection. She said, I know you're the resurrection. You will resurrect him, not now, in the future. But Jesus is saying, I am here. I am here now. 
I am here now. And he demonstrates that what other one but here he You want to say nation. And Jesus declares that I'm about to demonstrate to you that by the Spirit on me, I'm not just the Lord of the resurrection from the future, I'm the Lord of the resurrection even now. Hear me. The Spirit of God in His own importance is able to put on immortality into your mortality even now. Oh, some of you don't believe in me. Oh my God. I pray that faith will be built up in your spirit in the name of Jesus. <laughs> there are encounters you can have with God that physics cannot explain. That biology cannot explain. That biochemistry cannot explain. Oh my God. Some, one time we were traveling, we were traveling to a mission by Jesus. We were leaving Nairobi at 4 a.m. and we got into the country and we were trusting God because by 4 a.m. we were already late and we needed to be in Kisumu and work some things urgently. And we drove, my God, we drove. At 8 a.m. in the morning, we were having breakfast in Kisumu. The way you are feeling is the way I was feeling. The way you are surprised is the way I was surprised. Because how is that possible? No matter how fast you drive, it's not about speed. The Spirit of God came and weakened us. My wife was here. We know, I'm not here to tell you stories. I'm here to prove to you that the spirit of resurrection, the Holy Spirit who is omnipotent, He can do things to you that nothing can explain. You can't take it to the lab. They won't have answers for it. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. There was a revivalist in South Africa and there was a breakout. A viral sickness that was affecting the skin and people were dying. And this man began to put on, people were putting on the, what do you call the protective gear to carry the bodies. This man said, I'm going to help. But I don't need the gear. And they were afraid that when they would touch these contaminated bodies, they would get sick. And it was true. Many that touched became sick and died. But this man of God who was full of the Holy Ghost, carried those bodies and disposed them off. Nothing happened to him. They say that anybody he touched where there was a virus, the virus would die. When you are full of the Spirit, there are things, my God, you can reverse that no man can explain. I'm here talking about the Holy Ghost because this generation has embraced technology and embraced another thing and has denied the reality of his power and his presence. We need to bring the Holy Spirit back to church. His name was John G. Lincoln. Psalms 139, verse 7. I have four minutes. Pastor, I will finish. Can we read together? Let's go. Whither shall I go? Come on, let's go. Three, one, go. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Verse 8. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Continue. Even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand 
shall go to me. Verse 11. If I say so, the darkness shall cover me. Even the night shall be light about me. Verse 12. Yet the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day, and darkness and the light are both alike to thee. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Look at your neighbor say the Holy Ghost is everywhere. The Holy Spirit is here now. The Holy Spirit is in your what do you call those places where you sleep? Don't be told. First place. They are still dormitories. You have just baptized them another gist name, but they're just it is where you sleep, right? <laughs> the Holy Ghost is there too. Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit is everywhere. Tell me about the Holy Spirit is everywhere. He says, even in hell, he is there. He's omnipresent. The person of the Holy Ghost. That's why anything you do in life, be careful though. Yeah, be careful. God is watching. The Holy Ghost is watching. There are no secrets before God. Secrets are only relevant in the realms of men. Because men cannot know everything, but God knows everything. Even the whispers of your heart, He knows them. He's everywhere, even in your head. That's why when they gathered in the house of the Pharisee and then they were having conversations and they were saying, this man, this man. He said, how can you say this man? He, he already knew their thoughts. Because even in their heads, he was there. <laughs> he is everywhere. Uh -huh. I saw you sitting under a tree. You have been with five men, and the sixth one you have is not even your husband. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. The Holy Ghost is everywhere. He's only present. He said, before him, darkness is as light. <laughs> there is no darkness before. He said, the light shines as day. Before God, there is no difference between night and day because night and day are both alike. Hey, say there are no secrets before God. Nothing is hidden to God. Yeah, that conversation you are having about your pastor and how he is cocky and how you're going to be, you know, removing him, he had you. He had you. And that's why he can reveal to the prophets. You know, we need a generation of believers that have been baptized in the gifts of the Spirit. So that the gift of discernment can be reignited. So the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom can be revived in your hearts. So that when you stand next to a man who doesn't introduce himself and say, Hi, Andrew. Say, so how do you know me? I just know. <laughs> we need to get to a place where by revelation we know people and we know things. For his glory. Every revelation that carries relevance in the kingdom must find expression in Christ. So revelation is not for gossip. <laughs> is gossip and God has no part in it. So after you call my name, tell me what is the purpose of God for my life. Look at your neighbor say, God is everywhere. 